Good afternoon and welcome to Think Tech Hawaii's Connecting Hawaii Business. My name is Kathleen Lee with Kathleen Lee Consulting. And on this lovely afternoon here in Hawaii, our guest for today is Michelle Carmack of Oak and Pine Society. So I'll go ahead and let uh, Michelle introduce herself and tell us about her. Hi, Michelle. How are you? Hello. Hi, I'm doing well. Thanks. Thanks for having me. This is a great opportunity. And I'm happy to talk more about Oak and Pine on this platform. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Michelle I'm Carmack. I am the founder and owner of Oak and Pine Society. Our platform is really designed to nurture female entrepreneurs and really our mission is to create opportunities for women who are designing life on their terms. So I'm happy to and excited to talk more about our society with you. Okay, so tell us a bit about um, your personal background and, and you can launch into how you came up with Oak and Pine. Yeah, um, so I come from a family of entrepreneurs and my grandma is the OG of business owners in our family. She, back in the 50s, she bought a one-way ticket from the Philippines to Hawaii. And oh, wow. she, yeah, and she um, eventually saved enough money to fly her five kids down. And, you know, thinking back to, and thinking at how I live my life now and how incredible things are for, in comparison to how they used to live, I just think about what if she didn't take that chance in, you know, taking that one-way ticket and flying down here and, and making those risky moves. Um, what if she didn't do that? My life would be so different now. So about two years ago, I realized that I wanted to do the same for my future family. And if I could create an environment where I'm just one level up of how I'm living now, I think I can call my you know, life a success if I can provide that to my future kids. So yeah, so really back in, um, Back in two years ago, I decided to start a business, but I really didn't know what it was. And I think we can talk about that a little bit later. Sure. Um, but in the midst of creating Oak and Pine and developing the concept, I really fell in love with the idea of female empowerment and supporting women entrepreneurs. And I really created a platform that allowed us to support one another in, in that way. You know, when I was creating Oak and Pine, I went through like these really highs and lows of emotions of I feel really excited about building a business and starting a future and um, doing something that I'm passionate about and then you would just slowly dip into I feel so anxious overwhelmed I feel alone and I feel guilty and that was really the moment of mine where I had to take a step back and say like why am I doing this and I recognize that there are other people out there who are probably feeling the same way and um, I just you know, asked, why are we doing this alone? So really that was the moment when I dedicated the platform to be in support of female entrepreneurs. Okay, so I know you gave me, um, when we were talking about your company, you gave me a brief description of Oak and Pine, which is a support system of, like you mentioned, female entrepreneurs. Could you go more into, you know, what your company entails? What does it offer? The services it offers? And what, if you could sum up, your company in like a couple of sentences, how you do it and go into detail. Yeah, so going to the details of it, you know, when I say that we're creating an environment for female entrepreneurs, it's really exactly that where you're leaning on peer to peer support. You also have monthly mentors that will give you the resources. And we really focus on both personal and professional development because in the entrepreneurial world, mindset is huge when it comes to that. Um, and, you know, we do other things as well, such as, let me back up, the base of Oak and Pine is really to nurture genuine relationships with like-minded women. And in order to do that, you not only focus on the productive stuff of building your business, but you also create an environment where we can um, build those genuine conversations, share our wind, share our stucks with one another, and move past that, that paralyzing feeling when you feel overwhelmed. Okay, um, and, and so go into that. So why did you feel the need to start Oak and Pine? Yeah, so for me, um, you know, talking about a few years ago when I decided to start my own business, I really didn't know what that was going to be. Right. I didn't view myself as an expert in anything. So um, that moment of, of self-reflection and realizing that I feel alone, I feel isolated, taking that moment to think about why am I doing this I felt like there was a need for other people to 
rally, I, I wanted to rally people together and say like, hey, it's okay to dream big. It's okay to um, really focus your energy on where you want your life to grow in towards. And that was when I actually pivoted Oh, actually, I didn't say this yet. So Oak and Pine was originally a baby boutique. Right. I remember you mentioned that. Yeah. And with with that, you know, when I was coming up with all of these ideas and getting creative with building this baby boutique, that's when I really felt alone and isolated. And that was the moment when I decided to dedicate the platform to female entrepreneurs who are designing life on their terms. And um, I really just felt the need that it's a... I felt the need that we had to come together to support one another through those hard transitions that we experience in entrepreneurship. Okay, and let's segue into that. What were the challenges that you faced starting off, like almost from scratch? Cause you went from, you know, baby boutique to something that empowers women. So what were, you, were the hurdles that you ran into? Yeah, I mean, the major one was, I don't know what I don't know and the, you know, Google is great. Google, I'm, I'm all about the school and university of Google. If you can just bootstrap your business by looking right. online, that's perfect. But the downfall of that is you have to know what to type into that search bar in order to get results. And the challenge there is you spend so much time with all these hypo hypothetical thoughts that you don't really use your energy in the proper places of building your business. So when it comes to Oak and Pine and allowing ourselves to share our experiences and share our stories that really allows us to, you know, share, well, this works for me. This is why, this is why you should try it rather than trying to put in all the guesswork where we have a space where we can share our feedback with one another. Okay. And what was the first thing that you did to start Oak and Pine? How did you even come up with the name? Oh, that's a good one. So, um, okay, so, well, oak and pine represents visually strength and resilience. And the reason why that fit with the baby boutique is because of my admiration with working moms. You know, I've seen how strong and resilient moms are when it comes to putting food on the table, being a mother at home. And, you know, you look at moms now with COVID and the closure, they're not only working full time, but they're also teachers now and they're um, their parents. So it's the, just this whole admiration for moms out there. And I think it really goes back to my my um, my love for the, the women in my family as well. You know, my mom is a really hard worker. So was my grandma from that story that I shared earlier. I just always admired women who who do what they need to do to make a great life for their families. So strength and resilience really fit in with a baby boutique because that's what I wanted to present. And funny enough, you know, pivoting to the female entrepreneur space, it still fits. Um, as an entrepreneur, you have to be strong and you have to be resilient because there's going to be so many times when you doubt yourself, when other people doubt you, and it's really important to continue to, with that vision and don't give up when it's uh, when times get tough. So that's really what the name represents is strength and resilience. Okay, so let's pick up from, uh, you were talking about the women in your family inspiring you. Yes, so um, they really inspired me in that I saw how hard they work in their professional lives and also in their personal life too, like putting food on the table, making sure that I go to a good school, making sure I do homework and and still you know hustling to, to uh, make sure that they bring home the bacon. And uh, for me, that admiration really carried through when I started working at my corporate job too. I saw moms who were doing the same thing. And, you know, the baby boutique idea was really surrounded around that muse of these women, uh, you know, being strong and resilient through tough times. And when I pivoted the platform to focus on female entrepreneurs, it really fit very well as um, for female entrepreneurs because, there are times when you doubt yourself, when other people doubt you, and you just have to stay true the, to the vision that you've set sail for and um, continue to take those baby steps towards that. Okay, let's pick up from that word. You mentioned pivoting, and, and that is what we are discussing today, right? Starting and pivoting your businesses, your business during COVID-19. Mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, the best place to start is to talk about how you pivoted your business. Like, how was it? How was it going? And then when the pandemic hit, how did you turn that around to adapt to it? 
Yeah, you know, when we were talking earlier, we were talking about the first pivot that Oak and Pine made. Um, to give everyone some background, you know, Oak and Pine really relied heavily on in-person events. And uh, we started off strong in February with two really successful events come March. Um, I had to cancel all of the events that we had lined up, not just the one in March, because everything was so uncertain. I wasn't sure if we were gonna be able to pick up where we left off. Um, and that was a tough time. You know, I had to refund everyone who purchased tickets and it was challenging, um, not only financially, but just as um, spirit wise, you know, like 2020, I really claimed that as my year to go full, full in to Oak and Pine and I created a strategy that really relied heavily on events. <laughs> we're good to go, ready to go, vision exactly. board, uh, exactly. <laughs> into action, and then. <laughs> Who would have thought that this pandemic would have hit so early on in the year? And, you know, it was disheartening. And I really went through all of the stages of grief when I had to cancel all of these events because, you know, you have this, this idea of what this year is going to look like. You have all of the 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 tasks in, in order. And then all of a sudden someone says, nope, that's not happening. So it was really disheartening. Um, so when we were first talking, the first pivot that we, that Oak and Pine did was an online three-day retreat, which uh, we felt was, ne was very necessary, you know, for not only entrepreneurs, but anyone in the space of being quarantined, uh, you really feel isolated and alone. And it really reconnected me back to when I first started Oak and Pine. Um, so that was, that was one pivot. Another pivot that we did was pretty recent. And I'm, I'm, I'm glowing about this because uh, I'm thinking back to when I came up with the idea. And what I'm talking about is uh, Oak and Pine launched a three month self care subscription box. And the whole idea of this came from the second closure of Hawaii. You know, I had a, it impacted me personally, yes, but then it also, I saw how it impacted women in our community. I saw how it impacted other um, business owners online who I admired. And rather than feeling stuck, I decided to lean on the Oak and Pine Society and just simply ask like, what would it look like if we created a subscription box? Mm -hmm. And I'm so proud of our society members because they also took the time to pivot and figured out a creative way to be included in this box. You know, you have people who have event focused businesses or service based businesses, and they found a way to be included in the self care box. And I'm just really proud of everyone for not only seeing the vision that I had with the self-care box, but also finding ways to pivot their own business and being part of something that was so different. And, you know, I, the reason why it was such a success is just seeing everyone rally together. Like not only the members who were involved in the box, but also for people who wanted to support women owned businesses, you know, like uh, when we launched it, it happens really quick. So, um, I came up with idea on Monday, pulled the members on Wednesday, came up with the logistics by Friday, and then by <laughs> Monday, the following Monday, we launched it and we sold 50% of our inventory in two days. And then within two weeks, we sold out of everything. So it, it was just so beautiful to watch the support within the community and also um, with other people on island too. It was just great. that that sounds pretty amazing. I'm actually looking forward to learn more about that box, but we are going to go on break. And when we get back, let's talk more about um, your tips for people who want to start up a business during this time, as well as how they can pivot. So stay tuned, everyone.
Welcome back to Think Tech Hawaii's Connecting Hawaii Business. My name is Kathleen Lee with Kathleen Lee Consulting, and today we are talking with Michelle Carmack of Oak and Pine Society. So when we left off, Michelle was talking about how she had to pivot her business to adapt to COVID-19. Now, Michelle, let's pick up from that, okay? Um, we can do one or two things. We can talk about how people can pivot their businesses now, or we can start with how people could start their business. Actually, let's go with the pivoting because it seems like you're you were like on a roll with that. So I'm a business owner, like a person over there is a business owner. What are your tips for someone to turn this around or you know pick up from like how the pandemic has affected everyone? Yeah, I mean, the first thing I would say is the way that you're feeling is okay. Like it, it's so as business owners, we're so hard on ourselves that. We, it's hard to move past that. I had a plan. This was what was going to happen, and now it's no longer an option. It's it is hard to move past that, and it's okay if you feel like you're there right now. Don't force yourself to move through that too quickly because there are so many learning experiences that you can get from that moment um, that will actually help you create a more authentic brand. You know, going back to oak and pine that moment where I was actually sitting right there on the floor, just like wondering, why do I feel so alone? Why do I feel so isolated? That was how, what led Oak and Pine to be where it is today. If I didn't experience those hard emotions, you know, I wouldn't have been able to create this platform for like-minded women who are doing the same thing I'm doing, who are designing life on our terms, you know? So self-reflection is huge when it comes to pivoting. Just really take a step back, be okay with how you're feeling, but also try to recognize what you can pick up from it and what you can learn from it, because there's so many good gems in that. Um, and there's so many people who will connect with that, that learning piece that you got. Um, another thing that I would say is take inventory. Take inventory of your personal skills, what you know personally, professionally, and then also look at your immediate network. You know, as entrepreneurs ourselves, we have big aspirations. You know, we have these big visions of where we want our business to be, but it's okay to live in that space, but we also have to make sure we're also looking at what is available to us right now. You know, so take a quick inventory of what you have available to you, whether that be your soft skills, your hard skills, your network that you have created, um, and really start to take note of that. And then the last thing I would say is figure out a strategy or a way to grow your immediate network and grow your resources. You know, with Oak and Pine, that is really the foundation of why business owners can move from startups to successful businesses is because we have this nurturing platform where women can come in here, we can support one another, we can share our wins, share our stocks, but we also have these resources that um, will help us grow both personally and professionally. And, you know, um, by creating these genuine relationships with other female entrepreneurs, you really extend your network and figure out new ways to collaborate, extend your reach for um, your audience and also get creative in your business. You know, um, kind of going back to the self-care box, who'd have thought that people would have partnered with Oak and Pine to promote their product or their service, right? Um, so fast forward to now, it's, it's that it's that natural collision that you get when you start surrounding yourself with like-minded women and just have that natural conversation with one another. That's just where the magic happens. I like that. Mm -hmm. That is where the magic happens. That's true. Um, so let's go back to, so you went over pivoting. Now let's go over starting a business. Yes. Any tips That's from true. there? Yeah. <laughs> That's actually my favorite part. Um, starting a business is my favorite part because that's where all the excitement is. You know, you don't, the uncertainty is still exciting enough where you want to pick it up and start brainstorming and, and getting creative with your ideas. And, mm -hmm. um, and you have to do it during a pandemic. So think about that too. <laughs> yes. We're going to do it during a pandemic. And uh, the great thing about now is most people are more consciously aware of supporting small businesses, you know, myself included, uh, when we were mid pandemic, 
like mid this year, I started to recognize how guilty I felt when I went to a big chain restaurant to order takeout. When I knew consciously, like when I knew that there were small mom and pop stores who are closing. So I think now the landscape that we're living in, people are making that shift of how can I support small? How can I support local? And I think that's, um, that's where you step in. That's where you started to build your own business and really start to think about what am I passionate about? What am I good at? What are the resources that I have available to me? And just take those slow and steady steps to actually pursue that vision that you've created for yourself. Well, a lot of people feel, and, and I completely agree with you 100%, um, but a lot of people feel that, you know, there's a certain sense of fear that holds them back from yeah. starting, you know, whether or not there is a global pandemic affecting us. So what would you say to those individuals who are afraid of starting something new at this time? Yeah, I tell them, get used to it. <laughs> Honestly, you know, being afraid and, and having that fear is a normal thing that you'll get almost every single day or every other day, at least with your business, uh, regardless pandemic or not, you know, like being an entrepreneur means that you, you see the vision and you feel the fear, but that doesn't stop you from pursuing it, you know, um, it's funny because last month we had a five, free five day challenge with our mentor, Gina Cargyle, and she had helped us find our resilience as an entrepreneur because when those feelings happen, there's certain exercises and tools that you can use to help you move past that quicker. I'm not saying that it's gonna put a blanket or a bandaid over it, no, because there's more self-reflection that has to happen in order for it to actually go away. But there are tools that you can use to kind of help you move past that, that debil debilitating feeling and, and start to really figure out how can you use this to move forward. Um, so yeah, if you're feeling afraid, you know, it's okay to feel afraid. It's totally normal and you're going to feel it again. But the, the only, the one piece of advice that I have is to figure out a routine that will help you move past it quicker, but then also allowing yourself to sit in that uncomfortableness, because that's where you will get a lot of the authenticity and building your business. And that's where so many parts of your business will start to stem off of and build off of that, that hard, um, that tough time that you, you experience as you grow your startup. Starting a routine is a great suggestion. Um, anything else that I may have missed that you want to um, share with the viewers out there regarding Open Pine or starting or pivoting your business during this time? Yeah, um, I do. When I first started Oak and Pine, after I pivoted from the baby boutique to the uh, platform for female entrepreneurs, the first thing that I did was I had a, an event. Uh, it was called the Vision and Vibe event. And at that time, I was not an expert in anything. I didn't view myself as an expert. I was great at watching Netflix, but other than that, I was just a daydreamer. And um, but what really got me to the confidence level to pursue that event was the hard time that I was going through, that emotion that I was experiencing and how I allowed myself to really sit in it and move through it and allowed myself to grow and think and dream big. You know, and even going back to my grandma's story of how she inspired me to take a chance um, just by moving from the Philippines to Hawaii, that really resonated with me. And although I didn't find myself as an expert in the sense of, I'm gonna tell you what to do in this workshop, I found myself an expert in creating an environment that felt safe, that felt like um, we gave ourselves permission to dream big and, and allowed ourselves to really lean on the other stories of other successful entrepreneurs. And that was the first event that I had with Oak and Pine. But really the launching pad that took Oak and Pine to the next level was um, back in 2018 or 2019 of October, uh, I partnered with six other female entrepreneurs to put together the self-made summit. And the reason why that was so beautiful was 
Oak and Pine started to grow because I allowed other entrepreneurs into my vision. And together we executed this amazing event, a, a full day conference uh, with 50 other female entrepreneurs. And um, since then, we've just taken off, um, you know, with the membership and with all of the other events that we have coming up too. And let's go into that. How do people become part of Oak and Pine? Yeah, so right now our membership doors are closed. We only have open enrollment two times a year, but I do want to encourage you to follow us on social media. Um, we are on Instagram primarily, but we're also on Pinterest, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, and um, and I think those are the primary ones. And our handle, social media handle is at oakpineco.com. Um, jump over to our website as well, which is oakpineco.com. Um, and you'll be able to subscribe to our newsletter and uh, you'll be notified when we do a free five-day challenge as well, which is something that we have every single month. That's awesome. Um, any last words, Michelle, before we close off this afternoon's very informative session? And thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, I thank you for having me. Um, if I can say final words, I just say I'm a dreamer. I'm a believer. I'm, um, you know, someone who believes that that staying true to your vision is work and it is going to test you along the way. But there is something if there is something that's calling you to pursue that vision, that is something that you have to take care of because fear is temporary, temporary, but regret is not. So if you're going to just allow fear to paralyze you, then you have to be okay with sitting with that regret. What a great way to close. It's very encouraging. Thank you so much. Um, again, to all the viewers out there, that was Michelle Carmack of Oak and Pine Society. So thank you again for joining us this afternoon. My name is Kathleen Lee with Kathleen Lee Consulting, and you have been watching Think Tech Hawaii's Connecting Hawaii Business. If you missed the live stream, you could catch it on thinktechhawaii.com or on Think Tech's YouTube page. Until then, have a good day, everyone. Aloha.